Hey guys, welcome to the first lesson of the second chapter of Empowerment 2. The second chapter is all about getting in touch with your theme and empowering yourself from a place of understanding and knowing and seeing that you are more than just your physical mind. So it's very important if we wish to fully empower ourselves and fully understand the lessons that come our way and be able to consistently continue to create the life of our dreams and be of service to humanity in a very beneficial and sustaining way, it's very important that we understand that we're not just our physical minds. So that's why the first lesson of this theme, of this chapter is called the physical mind, the non-physical mind, and the higher self. So I wanna make these distinctions, at least give you an introductory understanding of them, because really where this teaching is going to unfold for you is in your personal life is as soon as you know that these levels exist you'll be able to recognize where certain aspects of your reality come from what it's inspired by and you can start sort of intuitively opening up to the higher mind and the higher self usually when you watch videos of me say on youtube you will find that i sort of group together the higher mind and the higher self i say things for example like um, pay attention to what your higher self is asking of you and um, or be intuitive towards your higher self or you are guided by a higher self or by a higher mind. Usually I just call it the higher self. But for the purpose of further clarification, I want to make some more distinctions here inside of the academy. So first of all, the physical mind. This is what you're very familiar with. Obviously, the physical mind is, is only designed really to, when it comes to knowledge, when it comes to knowingness, it's, it's, its expansiveness is very limited. And this is what makes the human journey so interesting, is to have such a limited point of view in space-time from which to have to figure things out, right? That's part of the reason it is set up in that way. But this is, the, the knowledge span of the physical mind is very limited compared to the higher mind and the higher self. Uh, for example, it's only really capable of knowing what is happening right now physically right now within its immediate physical circumstance and what has happened to its immediate physical circumstance, to its space-time orientation in the past up until or starting from birth or slightly after birth for most people. So basically the physical mind is only designed to know the span of this life and not even the future probabilities of this life. It's only designed to really know what's happening right now, to be able to respond to what's happening right now using memory from this very limited time span that we call a lifetime to assess the information and the data that it gets thrown in its face, basically, which of course we know is not being thrown in its face by anything external to itself. It is actually attracting this to itself. However, it's doing so in combination with the higher mind and the higher self. So in other words, let's say we approach a complete stranger that only is identified with their personal physical minds. And we tell them, did you know you create your own reality? Did you know that you're attracting all of these experiences to yourself, both the good and the bad? And of course they will assume or they will, they will respond in a way that seems like they don't agree with this at all. That's because they're coming from identification solely with the physical mind. They're not really aware, most people are not really aware, not acutely at least, they might have some vague beliefs about something higher. But most people do not really know and understand and are able to see and are confident in the knowingness and the intuition that they are not just their physical minds, they're actually also the higher mind and they're actually also the higher self. And ultimately they are the all that is consciousness and even more absolutely, they are the one infinite unity, the one infinite creator before all was manifest. So, you know, approach an average Joe, no, no offense intended, on the street and tell them they create their own reality. The first response you'll get from a physical mind-based identity is, of course not, because if I think this, I'm still getting other things. I cannot fully control my reality by thinking or by vibrating. So they will probably perceive that as nonsense. But again, this is because we tend to come from the identification solely with the personal physical mind. So the physical mind, again, is capable of registering data as it comes in into the present, what we call the present, physical stream of space-time. 
and it's using past memory from its similar orientation within the space-time realm to assess, based on memory, how it wishes to interpret and understand and learn from the experience that's presently occurring. Now, another reason that I'm sharing about the higher mind and the higher self is not only to improve your understanding of how you attract and create your own reality, but also so you can improve your understanding of how to interpret and learn more efficiently from the experiences that your overall being attracts to itself. Because again, if all you come from is the memory of this life, your conditioning, your conditioned beliefs, and that's all you have to respond to the fresh data that's pouring in every second into your now space-time orientation point of view moment, then obviously you're going to be very limited in your interpretations of why things are attracted into your life. So we need to become more reflective and in order to become more reflective and to learn faster and more rapidly and more efficiently and to be able to interpret why things are attracted into our lives, to learn more efficiently, we need to include in our understanding, the understanding or the idea of the higher mind and the higher self, or generally you can just sort of call it the higher self to bunch it together. That still works, it's almost as efficient. But again, since this is the academy and I want you to understand more precisely what is actually going on, I want to make a distinction. So physical mind, I've just gone through, this is what you know. When I call your name, that's what responds. It responds based on memory and conditioning, usually most of the time. And it's kind of limited in what it can do and create and know. It's almost like the physical mind is the victim of all the rest of yourself. It's the, rec at the receiving end of all of yourself. But it's not all that you are. It's not who you really are. It's just an aspect of who you are. So that makes you not the victim. It makes you the creator as well as the receiver. And now this is going to help you interpret these experiences more efficiently. Then we have the higher mind. The higher mind is rests within a density that is in between the physical mind's density and that of the higher self's density, which is the sixth density of love light being in union the density of unity. It's where everything, where all polarities come together. It's completely timeless as we would see it. So the higher self is rested there, but in between the higher self and the physical incarnational experience of the physical mind, there are levels in between. Most notably, the non-physical mind or the higher mind. So this non-physical mind is the mind that takes care of a lot, <laughs> to put it quite frankly, takes care of all these things that we're not conscious of. Um, but most importantly, what's most relevant for you to understand is that the higher mind is kind of the overseer of all the probabilities that tie into your present space-time point of view vibrational nexus. It's like you're from the higher mind's point of view, your physical being, your physical mind is always at a crossroads, always. It's always in the center of a four-way street, so to speak, in the center of crossroads. And so at any moment when that nexus moves, when you're choosing, making a choice, or when, or when you're just having choices be being made for you by, say, your conditioning or unconscious mind, nevertheless, you're always moving your center of the, po the point of view that you are. Now, people that are less aware of the fact that they can change, they will change less vibrationally. But nevertheless, every small, tiny difference in the universe is still a complete difference. It's a completely parallel reality. So the nexus, the center of this crossroads that you always form from your point of view as a physical mind, from your vibrational spectrum as a physical being, the higher mind is, or the non-physical mind is perceiving this from a broader point of view. It's kind of like it's on top of the mountain and it's seeing what you're trying to do and it's seeing all the pathways that lie in front of you. You only see what's now and the only choice you have is how you respond to the data that comes to you. But again, so the non-physical mind has a much, much, much broader view than you have and it sees parallel realities and it sees parallel timelines and it sees the probabilities and the vortices and how they change based on the things that you choose. So it's always sort of with you navigating and guiding you because it sees if you make a change, the crossroads change, meaning now you have access still to left, right, uh, forward and back and up and down. But since you change your position, 
the options and how that looks like and the probable timelines and the probable experiences that are now most immediately connected to where you're at are being perceived and based on that and based on the theme and the blueprint and the intention with which you came into this life, it will guide you, it will nudge you, it will send you intuitive hints, it will be always connected to you and sent you a sense of support if you want to tap into that sense. Obviously, that is also up to the physical mind because it has its own level of free will and the higher mind or the non-physical mind, which is the same thing, cannot really impose its will and intuition onto the physical mind. The physical mind's free will is honored and so it is up to us to expand our understanding of our lives and who we are as a whole being and start living in conjunction with, in cooperation with that higher uh, intelligence that is also a real aspect of our overarching being. So, the non-physical mind is basically the blueprint of, it contains the blueprint of your physical life, the most likely avenues of exploration. I also call this your theme. And this theme is infused this thematic plane this uh, it's also called the blueprint plane sometimes or the um, the template plane so this plane and plane is simply another word for density or dimension of consciousness is infused obviously with consciousness but it's infused with the consciousness that has a higher vibration and it has a bigger perspective and it has way more knowledge to draw on and it's more immediately and more consciously connected to the higher self, which is the overarching being of you as an individual here. It's like the individual soul. And again, so the, the non-physical mind is sort of like another functionality that comes with this incarnation, whose job it is to sort of oversee your path as you're going along making choices either consciously or unconsciously, either deliberately or randomly but it's here as sort of your safety net, as your intuitive guide. It's your first and foremost guide. It's kind, in some ways, at least from our perspective, it's kind of like the higher self, not so much from its own perspective, but from what we know, that's why we can group it together quite safely and still experience the same benefits of receiving information. It, it's kind of similar from our perspective in many ways, but the higher self is less involved in a sense. It's less involved with the details of your life. It's almost like the CEO of a company, for example. It's not necessarily managing every micro detail of, um, of the employees. That's why there's managers or team managers. So the team manager, in a sense, is what the non-physical mind is. It's like that perspective or that level of your consciousness which has more of an overview and has intimate knowledge at all times, intimate awareness of your theme, of your being's true desire, of your higher self's true desire and intention behind this incarnation. And it functions as the manager, it functions as the bridge, so to speak, that makes the higher self's overall theme and love light and channels that in a way that's very specific and guided and monitoring this physical mind's experience. So as an individual extension of your overarching soul or higher self, we could say that you are both the physical and the non-physical mind together, working together to make this life, in a sense, a success. Although every life is a success because every experience and every life and every moment is an expression of the one infinite creator getting to know itself in a way that it hasn't quite before known itself because of the new relationship that you're building to all of its potential realities in your particular unique way. But the higher mind or the non-physical mind is here to guide you. It has that template for your life intimately in its awareness and it's always, it's always trying to align you most effortlessly and in the best possible, most efficient possible way with your chosen desire and blueprint for this life. Now the physical mind might argue at times with the non-physical mind's duty to bridge the true intention of your overarching higher self being into this physical life. Meaning that maybe you think based on the definitions you picked up within your memory of this limited lifespan and based on your limited awareness from the physical mind's point of view, you might think that you want certain things, but it's actually not what you as an overall being desire for yourself. So certain things are not, in a sense, allowed to be made manifest or not 
quite yet because you're not yet having gone through the vibrational learning curve or experiences that you actually came here to experience. So you've not yet gone through the transformational experience which the soul craves most. It wants the transformational relational experience from the physical mind sort of paying attention and transforming limitation into transformation and bliss and joy and love. That's most valuable to the soul's expansion. So it will always attempt using the non-physical mind to guide this process most efficiently and accurately. And you sense this from the physical mind, if you're open and receptive enough, as sort of a nudging, as sort of a intuitive impulse, as a intuition, basically. So see the higher self as the overarching, just like a sphere of love light that includes all the information of all of your parallel expression, all of its parallel expressions and of which you are one. And so in a way, every physical mind comes with its own non-physical mind or with its own higher mind tailored specifically to be a non-physical guide that sees more timelines and probable realities tailored specifically to the life of that particular physical mind. So you are a physical mind and you are a higher or non-physical mind. And ultimately, of course, you are your spirit. But most relevantly to this life, you are a physical mind that is trying to figure out how to work more efficiently in cooperation with the non-physical mind. In order to do this, you need to open up. You need to meditate every once in a while, at least in some way. It doesn't have to be in the traditional way, but in your own way, you have to pay attention, which is really what meditation is. It's paying attention. It's becoming more aware of what's already happening, who you already are, how aware you already are. And through that increased process of opening up and becoming more transparent, you will then start to become highly, highly intuitive. So again, higher self is like the soul that contains everything, all the information, and that is sort of on its own journey still as well, back into the creator. In order to complete that journey, it will have all these live experiences that are guided by the higher non-physical mind, which is not limited by the space, time, realm limitations of the physical mind. It is way more expanded. It sees from time first and then space, which is a little complicated. I won't get into that now. But basically, it's not limited in the ways that the physical mind is. So it's its more unlimited aspect that is then able to guide and nudge the physical mind as it goes through its more limited points of views, transformational journey. So that's the basic gist of it. Um, I would like you for this week's homework or this lesson's homework, depending on how long you take with this lesson, I want you to start paying attention to the things that are not working out in your life, meaning that where you have a discrepancy between, and this is in preparation also for one of the later lessons in this chapter, but where there's a discrepancy between what you think you want and what's actually coming your way, because that's always part of two reasons, one of two reasons. One is either you have a limiting belief that's blocking you, or it's not relevant for you yet to have that experience that you think you want. And actually your higher mind is nudging you to look in a different direction to find your truer joy or to find a truer aspect of your theme, to find a ultimately more fulfilling route to take. So either you're blocked because of personally mind-based limiting beliefs, physical mind-based limiting beliefs, or you're blocked because from a truer level of your being that has more awareness of what your actual desire for this life is, it sees that it makes no sense to give you that experience because you would not actually find your truest joy. You would not actually find your truest alignment. A little bit more on this later, but for now, in preparation, I want you to pay attention to those moments in your life where you feel you want one thing, but you're getting something else. And I want you to then include the perspective that maybe, or certainly, in many ways, certainly th this is being communicated, something is being communicated to you from the higher mind's point of view, from the non-physical mind's point of view. So I want you to start paying attention and being able to notice that you are actually being guided all the time by a non-physical counterpart mind. I want you to grow more intimately familiar with and start paying more attention to, become more aware of the connection that's already constant, the support that you're already always receiving. And so either do this in meditation and or do this while you're walking into everyday life experiences and start to become more 
closely aligned in your vibration, in your consciousness, to what the higher mind would actually be like. How is the higher mind or how is the non-physical mind perceiving your present physical experience? And you'll feel that your awareness starts expanding beyond the limitations of just this sense of being a physical location within space and time. And you'll start to feel at first more spacious. You'll start to feel as if you're becoming more than just your body and you're becoming more grounded in a wisdom that doesn't flinch at mu as much, that doesn't react as much to circumstances, that doesn't project as much lack immediately when something's not working out. You gain a broader perspective. You are more closely aligning your personal frequency, making it more transparent, therefore, because of a closer alignment to the higher mind's knowledge and wisdom and love and support and guidance and desires. So in a sense, our journey in this life is to make our physical minds more and more closely aligned with our non-physical minds and our higher selves as well. So pay attention, understand and imagine and feel how you're not just a physical mind going through a physical experience, but how everything is actually happening inside of your consciousness. And if you want to gain a more immediate experience of how everything is inside of your consciousness, I recommend you follow the enlightenment courses. But simply for now, if you haven't followed that yet, simply understand or know or imagine that every experience you've ever had only takes place inside of your higher mind's consciousness, so to speak. And that you assume to be this physical mind's point of view, but really you're much more than that. And so just by connecting to that higher mind or that non-physical mind, you'll now be able to receive more, much more clearly its intuitive direction and impulses. And you'll be able to enjoy as part of your vibrational experience of yourself, much more of its stability, its presence, its ease, its love, its compassion, its non-reactiveness. Because now you're not just coming from the automatic, unconscious, personal based mind that is only using this lifespan's memory to react to new data, you're actually opening up and expanding and you're using more and more of your intuitive higher minds resources to learn from the experiences that come your way and to interpret them from a place of confidence in the abundance that everything is being brought to you for a reason. Play around with this. Pretend you're the higher mind while you're going through your physical experiences. And when you feel like you're getting the hang of that and it's really starting to shift your vibration and your awareness, then you can proceed with the next lesson and I'll see you there. Thank you. Have fun. This is fun practice. Try it.